Thank you so much for being here. I would like to kindly ask you one thing, if you could avoid taking pictures of the screen, and I will explain after the pitch why. Um, so I am Ludovica Fales, and I have a passport, as you can see, and I hope you all have passports in this room. Just a few months ago, uh, after Brexit, I was going through border control in the country I currently live in, in the UK, although I'm Italian, and for the first time I was questioned about my passport. My passport was checked and checked again, and uh, they asked me if it was fake. And for the first time, I felt unwelcome in a country that I consider my home. Uh, so I went back home and I called my grandmother and she said, yeah, we live in dangerous times. I've seen this before. Uh, in Italy, when I was young, so many people were made unwelcome, persona non grata. And we said this was never going to happen again. Lala has no passport, has no papers. She is a Roma teen mother and she's faced with the threat of having her child adopted. She knows that her papers are everything. She doesn't have paper, and without papers, you can't have a job. And without a job, you can't have a house. And without a house, you can't keep your child. And so, uh, Lala, has nothing in life but her child. So she's ready to do everything to keep her child with her. She goes through all sorts of Kafkaesque experiences to get her papers legally. She has one week, one week before her 18th birthday. And if she doesn't get the papers within that one week, she will never have them. So at some point when she realizes that she can't have her papers legally in that week, she's ready to resort to illegal means even. But that fails too. And on the day of the deadline, she's there in the community when, where her child is kept and they tell her that the kid is going to meet the foster family soon. So she hates them. She hates them. She hates the system. She hates the foster family that is about to meet her kid because they can offer her something, offer the kid something that she can't offer. And she hates herself because she has nothing to offer. And she could just maybe take the kid and run away and steal her own kid to keep him with her. But at that moment, she turns and she sees a family that is has just taken a kid like the one she has. And, and they're young and they're nice. And probably she wanted a family like that. She always wanted a family like that. So in that moment, she makes the most difficult decision of all. She walks out of that building. She jumps on a train that is about to leave to Germany, and she's surrounded by tens of people who are trying their luck to make that journey with her. And she puts a veil on, and she gives up on her speech. She becomes mute to conceal the fact that she can't speak Arabic. And when she gets off that train, and she joins that crowd to try her luck and try to get the refugee status as a Syrian girl called Leila, she knows that if she will succeed, she will go back and get Toto, her kid. But if she will not succeed, at least she will have tried everything in her power to give her child a better future. And this is the story of Lala.
Thank you, Ludovica. Only a few words about our team. Uh, Ludovica, director, I love her because of her passion, her powerful presence and straight-to-the-point positions, like Lala, the main character of the, of the film. Uh, but the story is, yes, about a microcosmos from Lala, but about the two but takes uh, only um, also a, a lot of political and contemporary, very contemporary uh, important issues. The world is changing, it's gonna change in very high speed. And uh, at that point, Lala's world is too short to be lived in only one way. And it's that I think that also we have uh, the, the, the necessity to, to see that film, to see that Lala's story in, uh, and has to be made, uh, it has to be done now, because after two, three, four years, maybe it will be too late, or it be another word when we go through. <coughs> uh, with us is also Manuela. Uh, he um, normally works uh, as a sales agent. He was uh, very successful with uh, my previous films, Zoran and Dancing with Maria. And, uh, but actually he's here like a as a creative producer, and uh, we all together in <laughs> this beautiful location of San Servolo have a lot of inspiration also for promotion and for distribution of this project. But uh, Manuela here is also a producer. Yes, and uh, we want all of you to be with Lala and to be uh, with Lala and deeply understand her reason until the last dramatic changes. And to do that, uh, we are planning the film in a cinema verite style uh, to use uh, light cameras, uh, natural lightning, and uh, a fast-paced editing, and to work with professional and non-professional actors. Uh, this is coherent with the story we tell, and is coherent with uh, Ludovica's career of documentary filmmaker, where she already proved to be uh, capable to emerge herself in different community and uh, to work with them with a deep understanding, compassion, and respect. And uh, we think, again, that this is the time for Lala, because Lala, it's one story, but it resonates the story of millions of lives alike. And uh, it's a, f a film about the need of a uh, humankind to transform itself to keep existing. And just to explain why I asked you not to take pictures, we're casting real people and we haven't chosen the main character yet. We are in the process of um, meeting real people and I, I've, I already filmed in that environment. And so at the moment we haven't, we wouldn't like to expose the identity of a person that we it's appearing for presentation purposes, so just for you to know. Thank you so much. Thank you.